Alright freaks, welcome to my new series. This will be a weekly update on everything that happened to me lawn care related throughout the last seven days. I'll, I'll go ahead and film the videos on a Saturday or Sunday and put them up so that um, it'll still be fresh in my mind because a lot of this stuff, um, I wish I would have started it a month ago because so, ma so many things have happened that you probably would have wanted to hear that you know that I just forgotten about or they're, they're no big deal to me. And a lot of this stuff I don't think like oh they don't want to hear about that but I have to remind myself that a lot of you are here because you're wanting to learn about this. And these things, although the, the guys have been around the block, it's no big deal. It just, you know, out of sight, out of mind, washes right off our back, all this crap. It's probably helpful to you. So I'm gonna let you know some things about what goes on. So we'll start right now. This week, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and back this up. Last weekend was Memorial Weekend. I had to be out of town for FitCon, so I had to do all my yards Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, which is a super challenge for me because I am actually doing a couple lawns every week on a Saturday right now. So I'm actually running six days. I knew I probably wouldn't be able to get it done. I talked to a few people. They're my older people and cool, and you know, you kind of know who's who and stuff. And I've been doing them for you know 20 years and all that. So they go ahead. Like yeah, don't don't worry about us. Don't just get us. You know when you get back, they don't care if they cut. I cut it on Sunday or Monday. They don't care about the holiday. So I'm like, all right, I knocked you know five of them off the list right there. Then I had busted man, and it was raining. It would rain on and off all week. So Thursday I cut 14 lawns solo. I don't like cutting 14 lawns. All right, and it was drizzling too, so it made it miserable. And um, yeah, I don't like cutting like that many lawns unless it's, it's an extreme situation, which was this. And it's very rare that I even take a vacation like this in the summertime. Definitely not in May and June. April, May, and June are the lawn care guys go time. That's when you make more money than any other weeks throughout the season. Stuff is just going hardcore. So you really got to be uncall. That's your bread and butter season. You can make almost double what you can make in like um, a August, September, but you still make money in August and September, but you get excess, you get unlimited work. So it was kind of crazy for me to do this, but I did it. Then um, I made it back, cut some few yards to catch up on Monday. That means I had Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's four days again this week to do all my lawns. But I failed, so I had to do some Saturday. And you remember my trimmer that I had sent into the shop? Well, I finally got it back. It's been a while, right? Well, they've called me three times saying, are you ever gonna come pick up your trimmer, dude? And I'm like, hey, you guys close at six o'clock. I don't get cut, done cutting grass till like five, six, seven o'clock sometimes. And I pick up the girls and then, I mean, it's just not gonna happen. I'm gonna be there on a Saturday when I can. So I picked it up, here's what it was. Well, the bill was 72.17. First of all, I'm seeing myself in the camera. I look really, really red. This camera does that sometimes, but I'm actually pretty red right now. It's been, it's been kind of um, hot outside. Okay, 72.17. It was the um, broken drive shaft cable, and then a couple other pieces, I guess, where it went into high torque, something or another, whatever. That's the story there. Three years, the steel FS70 has been running without a problem. It broke the same week. My twin to it, which is three years old, broke just a pull rope. So the pull rope was fixed real easy. And now this one, it might keep going, you know? So we'll see what happens with that. Um, here's something else for you. Do you freaks remember this lawn from my how to trim pampas grass video? Well, yes, I have been doing this lawn since the 90s, and when I first picked it up, it was a husband and wife, and um, it was weekly. So it was like that for a long time, but he passed away. After he passed away, she asked me if I could start doing it every other week. And you know, half of her income went away, and I went ahead and just said, yeah, no problem. I didn't even raise the price on her. I just took care of it. You know, it would be kind of tall in the spring, and then it would be okay, you know, later on in the year. But I felt bad for her. Well, 
here it is, it'll be like 20 years later, and she went ahead and came out, I cut it, I cut it two times this year, and then she came out and asked, she said, can I just call you next time I need it? In my brain, I just rattled it all off and instantly and thought, well, that's the end of this line, because that never works out. And I just said, sure, but you don't think you want it every two weeks? She goes, well, I just don't, I don't, I don't know. I'd, I'd rather just call you. I said, okay. I thought, well, either her mind's going and she's getting goofy or there's some sort of financial problems, whatever. Either way, I'm probably going to be out of here. And sure enough, the first time she called me, it was a, like a day after two weeks. And I actually had an opening that day. I went by and I hit it and everything was cool. Well, here we go last week. I was gonna be out of town for the weekend. I'm on my 14 yard day to get ready for the weekend. And she calls. I actually answered it to her. Because now, keep in mind, I had drove down her street once just to look at it, because it's I do other ones around there. And I was like, oh man, it's gonna be brutal. You know, she better call soon. This is, I thought, oh, she's gonna call me right before I leave town. Sure enough, she called me on the day. I have 14 loans on the schedule, and I'm gonna be gone for three days. So I tell her, well, you called me at the bad time. Um, I'm not going to be able to take care of it until Monday. If you want me to come by on the holiday, oh, no, I needed a cut for Monday. I said, well, this is what happens when you, know, you go down and just call. Uh, I can put you on a schedule for next week. Other than that, um, I won't be there. And she goes, oh, what am I going to do? I go, well, you know, you can, um, you can call a couple of these other people and see if they can help you out real quick. Well, she didn't want the number. She said she's going to have a family member do it, and goodbye. And she hung up. So that's okay. I'm not going to call her back. She, I wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't call me back. And if she did, and it was in a couple weeks or whatever, I would um, probably just cut the grass and go on with it like normal. Unless it was sky high, then I'd say, hey, you know, we need to talk about a few extra dollars here. But, you know, over time, if you're doing people's lawns for years and years, you can see changes in them. As they get older, some people do change and lose a little bit of their mental capacity, but not everybody, you know. But I have seen it a lot, and I've gotten, you know, kind of used to these things. Um, if you do have somebody right now that you do not want to cut their grass anymore, don't feel bad about quitting them. But if you do quit them, I would say do it in a way that they don't really know that you're, like, dissing them or anything. So go ahead and lie if you have to. Tell them... You know, things have come up in my life. I'm not going to be able to take care of as many lawns as I have, so I'm just going to do the few in my neighborhood. And I really wish I could help you out, but I can't. So here's a couple numbers of guys that can take care of you. And just leave it at that. That way they think that something's wrong with you, not them. But yet, the numbers you give them, give them the most expensive dudes that only want weekly and contracts and all that. So when they call them, they're going to appreciate what they had before. When they get quoted some massive price and what the people want to do, they will look back and be like, oh, man, we had it good. So you're training them for the next guy. Oh, yeah, one more thing. I lost a pin to one of my trailer hinges. See the pin that goes in there? Well, I pull up in the yard. I lower my gate, but it's wobbling as I go down. Look, I'm missing one. It fell out. So now I have to have somebody cut a piece of rebar, stick it in there, and weld it in there. So, hey, my yard's coming in pretty good, huh? Yeah, it's cooking pretty good. Look at that edge. And I don't even own an edger. Figure that out. That's right. All trimmer, baby. Nice green lawn. I got a garage full of lawn care equipment and other freaky things. Home sweet home.